It's time for another rousing episode of That's Blasphemous, the show where we have a look at all the blasphetacular things going on in the world, and yes, unfortunately, in the church, in an attempt to laugh because if we don't laugh, then we'll want to cry and hide away from all the evil in the world. So buckle up because we're headed into strange territory today. So let's have a look at I don't know how to describe it as anything but something weird from the world of evangelical, charismatic, non-denominational, self-professed Christianity meets Hong Kong martial arts films. Look, I love a good Chinese martial arts film, but this is something else entirely. I've heard of being moved by the Holy Ghost. I'm extremely suspicious of the charismatic movement, choosing instead to listen to the advice of exorcists about that stuff instead of the first-hand accounts of people who participate. But this takes charismatic self-proclaimed Christianity to a whole new level. I'm reminded of the story of Simon Magus, the guy who wanted to buy the powers of the Holy Ghost. Maybe I'm wrong, but somehow I don't think the Holy Ghost is giving people the power to use martial arts to knock people down and cause them to flop around on the floor like that they've been hit with movie lightning. Charismatic Christianity is some weird stuff, and charismatic Protestantism is even weirder. But I'll give these guys points for creativity at least. Now, our next story takes us to the Vatican, where who else but the Jesuits decided to host an art exhibit that features same-sex couples and even a witch. Yeah, they did this at the Vatican. I mean, it's not like these guys are hiding it anymore. It's almost cliche at this point to say that whenever you see something heterodox or heretical in the church today, you'll find a Jesuit standing nearby, nodding in approval and taking notes. As you can see in the image, which comes from LifeSite, the exhibit is called Unbelievers and is being hosted in conjunction with the university's Faculty of Theology, which makes sense because birds of a feather flock together. This garbage was on display from the 28th of May to the 30th of May, and it featured portraits and stories of atheists and unbelievers from across the world. How very ecumenical. If you had gone to see this horrific art display, you'd have learned about London-based practitioner of chaos magic, Patricia McCormick, who says her interest in occultism is about resisting God as the overarching white patriarchy. God's white, apparently. News to me. The exhibit notes that she is also an advocate for human extinction. Yikes, folks, this is presented by the Jesuits. This sounds more like something you'd see featured on Netflix rather than something in the Vatican. Other displays include a celebration of a homosexual apostate who left the faith to live with his boyfriend in Rio, which sounds like something out of a bad Holly Weird film, as well as a display celebrating the Satanism of human worship. In this display, you meet a guy calling himself the Apostle Erlon, who says, and I quote, Why do we have a religion without God? To which he responds, People think too much about the holy books and forget about love and respecting each other. The essence of religion is human connection through altruism. It's a natural religion. We have faith in love, science, and humanity. Comte taught us to continuously update the dogma to reflect the changing times in knowledge. End quote. You know, I gotta say, I can understand why the Jesuits brought his display in. He sounds just like one of the modernists. At least he was honest enough not to try to brand his evil as Christianity. Keep an eye on this guy. He'll probably end up teaching at a Jesuit university or even getting ordained as a priest in the Jesuit church. Unfortunately, we have to keep with our Catholic focus. Lepanto Institute is reporting that the director of Catholic Relief Services may have participated in a pagan ritual. As you'll see in this image, a display of some kind of altar for worship or a pagan blessing. I'll quote the Lepanto Institute article on this. As with all of my sources, they can be found on the blog, return to tradition.org, a link in the description of this video. Quote, Ruth Junkin, who is Catholic Relief Services Deputy Regional Director for Program Quality in Latin America and the Caribbean, is indicated in the image above by a red arrow. In the foreground of the picture can be seen, on the left, what appears to be a black statue of Anubis, the Egyptian false god of the underworld, and a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the right, set out on an ornate cloth adorned with candles and other unknown statues. In the center of a photo is an expectant mother wearing a crystal pendant around her neck and a flower wreath in her hair, while the hands of her friends rest on her belly. On the floor surrounding the strange array of statues and candles are yoga mats. 
the ritual taking place is called a blessing way, or mother's blessing ceremony. And everything identified in the picture, the statues, candles, pendant, floral wreath, etc., all play a part. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the Blessing Way finds its roots in the pantheistic tradition of the Navajo. Blessing Way, central ceremony of a complex system of Navajo Blessing Ways, Holy Ways, Life Ways, Evil Ways, War Ceremonials, and Game Ways. Part of the general Blessing Way, especially the songs, are included in most Navajo ceremonies. End quote. Now, just remember, there are special collections for Catholic Relief Services in your parish every year, and her salary is covered at least in part by that collection. I know the church doesn't strictly require employees to be Catholic, but this goes beyond reasonable accommodation for non-believers. Though the bulk of her pay likely comes from federal contracts, a major source of the corruption in the church in the United States and beyond in our present age. Next, we turn to Germany, the home of heresy and heterodoxy. Gloria TV reported several days ago that a German priest and seminary instructor actually upheld Catholic orthodoxy with his students regarding same-sex attraction. I know, I'm shocked too. He made some startling comments about how that condition can be cured, how it is disordered, and other such rather sensible things. The outcry from the media and the public was staggering, though that outcry never engaged in counterfacts and trying to engage in a debate. All this caused the bishop, Cardinal Rainer Maria Wolecki, to withdraw, his, to withdraw the priest's name as a participant of the coming German synod that will try to normalize sexual deviant behavior in Germany. Instead, a German Catholic church ho hoisted the first deadly sin flag in protest, and the parishioners cheered, and the priest expre expressed his pride in the display and in his flock. I bet the event hit close to home. I bet he's really looking forward to that synod, and is really hopeful for its outcome. No word yet if the German priest who defended the faith has had to go on the run like Father Kalchik or others in the United States have had to when they have defended orthodoxy. Finally, we have the story of the self-described Peruvian prophet of the Amazon. What's his story? It's simple. According to him, by not treating the earth as a sacrament, the bread and wine offered at the Mass are somehow invalid, as the offerings are tainted. Yep, you heard that right. Pollution and environmentalism are now important to the Mass. This was predictable, of course. Let's have a deeper look at his bizarre statement. The following quote comes from Crux, who professed to be taking the Catholic pulse. Quote, I said that if we offer bread from land that's contaminated, we are offering God a contaminated fruit. And the same for the wine, he said, which he said these words in reference to his time in something that sounds suspiciously like the liberation theology movement, but with a green coat of paint added on for good measure. He's been on this crusade for decades now, and only now is it catching on, likely because of the Pope. Predictably, the priest, Cardinal Barreto, is a Jesuit. It's always Jesuits. His statement was made recently in, the, in regards to the coming Amazon Synod, set for October, which will almost certainly be a dumpster fire of heterodoxy and heresy. Quoting again, A key talking point will be how to preserve the 7.5 million square kilometers of the Amazon forest, roughly 67% of which is in Brazil and 13% in Peru, which is already diminished by nearly 20% due to deforestation. It's a very important region for the life of the planet and the future of humanity, Barreto said adding that the vitality of the region is being put at risk by economic interests." End quote. Now, I am concerned with deforestation, especially in the Amazon, because he's not exactly wrong that that would have catastrophic effects around the world, but that's not the real agenda here. Beretta goes on to link deforestation to the Eucharist and the shortage of priests, and his conclusion is to change ordination to include Mary priests, a touchy subject in the church today, and one which I squarely and unapologetically fall on the side of tradition, which has always favored celibate men. The Cardinal hit every modernist topic in one interview, including gender roles, which is really odd given that it was in the context of indigenous peoples of South America, who tend to not have had the influence of feminism and liberalism and the egalitarianism that goes with them. So let's review. The Cardinal uses the Eucharist as a crux, so to speak, to promote environmentalism, changing the ordination norms in the church, and of course, addressing gender issues. Using the Eucharist for this end is blasphemous. The Eucharist is not some cudgel to be used in a political game, though these people will never ever get that. I'll leave you with something humorous. Obviously, this was edited with modern dance music, if you can call it that. Feast your eyes on modern charismatic Protestantism. Lord have mercy.